Hi everyone and welcome back to 4Teachers. If you're new to this channel, my name is Katie. I'm a primary school teacher from the UK. I'm currently working internationally out in Hong Kong. I think that personal reflection is very, very good for teachers, which is why I decided today to take a trip way, way, way down memory lane and have a look at my first ever lesson observations in my QTS evidence file. I have actually already made a video all about your evidence file. If you would like some more information about what to include inside it, how to address the standards, if you would like to check that out, the link is down below in the description box of this video. This one is more reflective on myself and what I was like as a student and my own learning style and in this video you will see what I was like in observations and what grades I used to receive for my observations and how I used to address the standards and how I used to evidence them but it will be very reflective on me as a person, so your teaching style might be very different to mine. But hopefully you will still find this to be quite useful, especially if you are a student teacher, or you're doing your PGCE, or Teach First, or you are considering becoming a school teacher, because this is part of the journey. I know that things have changed since I did my degree, I was a graduate in 2013, so of course things are going to have changed. There was more standards to address when I did my training than there is now. They have made them shorter and more concise. There are going to be lots of things that have changed, but at the end of the day, it's a lesson observation, it's evidence, and it's targets that I used to have that maybe I might be much better at now. I think it will be really interesting for me to reflect on my own journey and share that with you. And hopefully it will just be nice for primary school teachers to use this as a little bit of advice and a little bit of reflection time with me. Here is the file. Trainee profile 2012 to 2013. Now, the first thing you might notice about this file is it isn't very big. I think, if I remember correctly, I did used to have all this information in a big ring binder. When I finished my student teaching year and I moved into my NQT year, I decided to downgrade it maybe. Um, and I think I put it into this smaller file. I don't know if I maybe took some information out as well and just kept the parts that I thought would be important to reflect on and look back on because I think it probably was a bit thicker back in the day but at the end of the day it's got the important stuff in it's got the information that I thought would be helpful to keep as it happens I didn't look back over it I haven't used it for reflections I guess my first point and my first piece of advice would be if you are spending so much time on your file and it's becoming the bane of your life and you're putting hours and hours and hours and hours of slog into it Maybe it's not worth all the energy. You still need to pass, you still need to do well, but try not to let it take over your life. At the end of the day, the most important thing on your teacher training is your actual teaching and your classroom progression. Yes, it's an important file, but please don't let it take over your life. But I'm not gonna repeat all of those things again and again because I say a lot of that in the other video. This is more like my own personal journey. So let's just open it up and have a look. First thing that I notice is that I've got a page here called my profile target sheet. This is part of Sheffield Hallam University's way of addressing the standards. I don't know if it's the same for every university, but I've set some standards and I've gone over them and evidenced them somehow. These are some of the first ever targets that I was given. Ensure that all lessons encourage motivation and the children are interested. Were the children not interested in my lesson? <laughs> And then it says concluded at final review but to always remain a target. Oh well, that's kind of nice. It's nice that I thought I wanted to carry on ensuring the students were motivated. <laughs> I like to think that my lessons are motivating. I'm not sure why that became a target of mine. I think I've always made my lessons quite fun but maybe there was a point in my teacher training where I was lacking enthusiasm and I needed to up my game. Manage behaviour effectively to ensure a good and safe learning environment. And then I've gone on to reflect and say, behaviour management strategies put in place, lollipop sticks are being used to promote inclusion and good listening, raffle tickets, the school system are distributed for good behaviour. Know when and how to differentiate appropriately using approaches which enable pupils to be taught effectively. Quite a lot of these targets that I'm reading through now are about things like differentiation and providing work at different levels for students. And I guess the irony of that is, is that now I find that to be one of my personal strengths. It's something that I sort of naturally do in my class quite a lot. In fact, on this channel, I've made a video all about differentiation for students. There are so many things I'm reading inside this file right now, and I'm thinking, these are things that I used to struggle with a lot, but now they come so naturally to me. Behaviour management, I think I find a lot easier these days. I've got so many strategies. 
the message to take from that would be any school teachers that are making these files at the moment or any teachers that are going on to placements or are midway through a placement, the things that you find difficult now might well become your strengths in the future. Okay, I think I'm gonna go back and find some of my first ever lesson observations because I know that lesson observations is a huge thing. It's one of the most highly requested videos that I actually get on this channel. I think I did a science lesson things that I did well in this particular lesson. You were prepared, equipment was on tables, and activity was ready to go. Class were able to walk in from lunch and start with the date and waltz straight away. Well done. Your starter question was good. Which do you think will float, a lemon or a lime, and why? This encouraged the children to discuss their thoughts and offered them the opportunity to give a scientific explanation. You were unsure on the definition of mass and weight. First you said they were the same and then read out a definition that explained the differences. <laughs> mass is not the same as weight. Mass is how heavy an object is. Weight is the force acting on mass, which is why there is a difference from the earth and the moon. Ooh, <laughs> I mean, the thing is about subject knowledge, I think when you become more confident as a teacher, you're more likely to put your hands up and say to the students, oh, I'm not too sure, let's research together. But I think at the start it is really daunting when you realise that you've kind of messed up or you've said the wrong thing. I can imagine my first year self getting into a right flap about that and getting really panicky and thinking, oh, this lesson is terrible. You know, when I look back over it, I can see that I've, you know, I've had good vocabulary. I've given the children time to explore the answers. The children were on task and enjoyed the activity. They had an extension which excited them. They were keen to take part. I stopped the class and highlighted things when appropriate. So I feel like there's so many positives in this feedback. And yet I can kind of imagine my first year self thinking this lesson was terrible. I did an awful job, probably just because I would have focused really heavily on making a mistake about something or maybe a few students not being on task or an element of negative feedback from a mentor would have really got me. I didn't feel like teaching was coming naturally to me at this point. I did feel like I was struggling a lot. I was finding it really difficult to meet the standards. I was finding it really difficult to plan lessons consistently. One of the main reasons I decided to make this video is because I was graded satisfactory, satisfactory, satisfactory for a really long time and if you actually look at the grading scale I don't know if they use it anymore but for my particular university cohort the grading scale goes satisfactory, good and outstanding and I can remember so many students on the course with me were bragging about getting outstanding in the first lessons and I remember thinking ah oh, like I'm only just satisfactory this is terrible like I'm doing a really bad job and I did it used to get to me quite a lot and I've had a lot of people message me on Instagram, I've had people message me on Facebook saying that they keep getting satisfactory as a result and why is that happening and they don't feel like they're making any progress and I think it's quite hard hitting to think that you're only satisfactory when you've spent hours and hours and hours putting together a lesson and resourcing it and you've put your heart into it and then it comes out with a grade like that. I think it's probably the same for the students sometimes, you know, they work so hard on something only to not really do very well at it. So yeah, I think I used to get really upset about it. But if you look in my file, I started out getting satisfactories, then I started getting goods. By the end of my placement, I was pretty much getting outstanding or good for every single lesson I was teaching. I think that looks really good when you, you know, have a meeting with your mentor at the end and you can say, look, I've improved each time. I've had this grade, but I've improved and I put all these things in place and now I'm here and I put all these things in place that were suggested to me. I moved up again and you can talk about your growth. I'm not an outstanding teacher now, even six years in. I still have targets that I need to work on in the same way that a student teacher has targets they need to work on and sometimes I teach lessons even now all those years later that I would grade as satisfactory like I got through the lesson I did a maths lesson I tried something a bit different it didn't really work the resources weren't great I didn't give the children the right amount of time for something and honestly if I had to grade that lesson I would probably give it a satisfactory it isn't a bad thing to be getting that sort of grade at the start as long as you know you can build on it in your second placement or your third or throughout the year if you're on a longer placement you can start to show improvements if you look at the chronology of this file you can see so many improvements are being made and I just didn't know they were gonna happen soon this is an observation from my second placement I taught a year one class for my second placement and I found it really really hard I didn't want to teach the younger years at all 
Uh, I was a little bit terrified, I still am a little bit terrified of anything younger than year three, but at the same time I gave it my all and I think it's really important for teachers that do teach older years to go and observe and get experience of working with the younger students because that's where you see like them start to play and develop their learning and their phonics and all these really interesting things that do help and influence your planning in the upper years as well. So I got graded good for this. Class settled on entry, all enthused by what was on the board, bringing in familiar objects and people. Not sure what I did, but I can imagine I was probably, oh, I don't know, showing photographs or something, something really tangible for the students to look at and connect to. Keeping in line with school systems, star and a wish. Now I think I know why this has been said. I think in this school I was given some negative feedback for a system that I trialled. So I've been given praise here for using the school systems. This is the placement I've spoken about in previous videos where I tried making my own sticker chart using like a coat hanger and this great big whiteboard and I put all the names on and I put stars on. It really didn't work at all. I don't know if it's because the students were so young and they had just adapted to the system that the class teacher had put in place. When I came in out of nowhere and started trying to get them to collect stickers to put on this chart, I don't think it worked particularly well. I'm being praised here for finally sticking to the school system systems and using them. Um, I think I used to find it really hard to use because the class teacher seemed to do it so effortlessly. She seemed to just know exactly when a child needed to move and and she had a good relationship with the students as well. She could say to them, go and move your name down, go and move your name up, which is something that now is so natural to me and I wouldn't even think twice about this. But back then I think I felt like I wasn't the class teacher, therefore I wasn't able to engage with that system in the same way. So I think that's why this feedback is highlighting that I'm finally using it because I was scared of it for so long. <laughs> But there's so many things that I can see on this actual observation that show an improvement. And I've been praised on my knowledge of openers, connectives, adjectives. Could have linked this to writing pyramids, missed opportunity to link punctuation. You know, I probably went home after this observation. I was probably really annoyed at myself. I was probably thinking, oh, if only I'd used those punctuation pyramids, I could have had an outstanding grade instead of a good grade. But in hindsight, I think your grade is somewhat determined by the fact that you can't possibly show evidence of everything in every single lesson. So it depends kind of what you and your mentor are looking for in that lesson anyway. If my subject knowledge was the target of that lesson and I did it really well, then I could maybe get an outstanding for it. At the end of the day, if my behaviour management was off or my timing and my pace was really, really wonky, then yeah, I don't think you can really get the full grade. You feel how this lesson goes. You feel if it's outstanding or you feel if it's satisfactory. Okay, here's a good one. This was a maths lesson that I taught with a year three class. Maths was my least favorite subject to teach. It used to keep me up all night worrying because I was so scared of not being good at number and worrying that I would get the answers wrong or I wouldn't have the subject knowledge required to teach it. And now, six years later, it is my favourite lesson to teach. You might find that suddenly it all starts to make sense. Word problems. Uh, three differentiated groups and it involved all and had effective pace. You can see in this lesson, which I've just checked was actually graded outstanding, I have made some pretty decent progress here, which is uh, comforting to see. <laughs> Posed questions appropriate to the age, encouraged children to use their known strategies again, linked to previous learning, excluded strategies, very good use of IT, smart board, very good differentiation, thoroughly explained problem solving method, plenary summed up and extended the learning. You know, there's tons of really nice things that were said about the lesson I taught. I've used loads of those, I've highlighted them in order to hit some of the standards. So I've used those as evidence to highlight things like secure subject knowledge, differentiated appropriately, I've used it as evidence towards differentiation as well. These are the kind of things that you can be using in your file as evidence that you've done it. And if my first placement had said you need to differentiate better, and I've done it in this lesson, then I've shown an improvement. Uh, I can remember getting a couple of outstanding grades on my final placement um, and being really excited about that. I think I had one that was a PE lesson that was graded outstanding, one maths. Things that I would have found really hard back then and knowing with confidence how easy I find those things now. Things that just come naturally to me as a teacher that if I told my past self, you're gonna love this or you're gonna be really good at this, I don't think I would have believed back then. I know that I wasn't a perfect student. I didn't get perfect grades in every single assignment I handed in. 
I didn't get the perfect results in every lesson observation that I did. But what I was really good at was listening to advice, improving my own subject knowledge, working really, really hard on my own professional development. And I really wanted to do well in every single lesson that I taught. But I think also teaching is just an ongoing journey and you don't qualify and suddenly you're ready to go. You sort of learn more in your NQT year, you learn more in your first couple of years of teaching, and it does become more and more natural as you do it. Lots of amazing things can happen to you as a teacher if you listen to the praise that you get, you listen to the improvements that you get suggested, and you constantly work on improving yourself professionally. Try not to take the grading to heart. One day this file will be something that maybe you have in your room somewhere and you look back on now and again and you read through your old lesson observations and they make you smile. The file is not something that should be all consuming for you. You should be enjoying your teaching placements and enjoying the opportunities that you get at the start of your teaching career. If there are other students on your course at the moment that are also worrying about your files, if you're talking about your files together a lot, please maybe send them a link to this video and hopefully it can help them as well. I've got so many more things planned for this channel this year, so if you are not subscribed to 4 Teachers already, please do so now by clicking the button down below. Please let me know down in the comments below what grade did you get for your first lesson observation. I'm really curious to see if people are similar to me, they started out lower and they got higher, or if some people just like went straight in there and maxed out the observations and did really really well. I'd be really curious to find out more and I'm sure some of the subscribers that listen to this channel would be as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next video.